Hello, Happy New Year. Um, so this is the first questions and answers of the year. So this is something I'm going to do every month. And I've got some good questions here from a few of you on my Instagram. Excuse me if I get your names a bit wrong sometimes. I don't know how to pronounce them, but we'll see how we get on. First one, first things first, at Stacey Degreed has um, asked, she says she's had three courses of uh, antibiotics and she feels dreadful and please can I help? So the thing with antibiotics are they are wonderful things. I mean, I, I don't take antibiotics, I've taken them very rarely, but when you need them, they're fantastic and they will kill bad bacteria. They also kill good bacteria and for us to be well and for our gut to work well and for our immune system to work well and for us to be in good health, we really need to have good bacteria and that's really um, a fact. I mean, without the good bacteria, we wouldn't be well at all. So once you've had a course of antibiotics, first port of call always is to take a course of probiotics to put back in that good bacteria that has been killed off by the antibiotics. Um, and so start with that and see how you get on. I would imagine it would make quite a big difference putting the probiotics back in. So you get a really good probiotic, so you're looking for billions and trillions and a good cross-section of different bacteria in them, so bifidobacterium, lactobacidophilus, all of the different ones you can get. Try and get um, as many yeah, different bacteria as you can and as many billions as you can. It's worth spending money on good probiotics and take them for 30 days. Um, and I, I like taking them at night time because I think then they do their work while, while you're sleeping, but whenever you remember them. Um, and then hopefully you should feel a whole lot better. Okay, so next we've got at Suzanne Lowe, who has asked, what, she rec what do you recommend to prevent bloating or generally feeling crap, uh, particularly around the time of the month? Um, and I've also got one from at Claire Lucy Beauty who says, how do you stop sugar cravings during the PMT? time of the month, uh, plus general feeling crap during that time. So I'm going to sort of answer both of them roughly at the same time, I hope. Um, uh, so, okay, so oh, the thing about um, premenstrual is that there's a lot of hormone action going on in the body and your liver is what processes hormones and gets, gets rid of them, you know. So, so you need your liver to be working well, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of estrogen, progesterone, all like, you know, like lots of, you know, just backing up really and you want to get them processed as fast as you can so make sure that you're eating a high fiber diet because that helps the transit time of waste through your body uh, make sure you're drinking loads and loads of water um, it stops it stops that sort of tension feeling it will help with the cramping um, chamomile tea is really a good one it really does help with cramps um, the bloating thing it depends on the cause if blo if bloating is purely because of the premenstrual tension then fiber water um, well, it should really help um, reducing co caffeine, reducing alcohol, sorry, reducing sugar. All the ones that you would imagine, they, they, they add to, to the body's reaction. You know, it can make things worse and reduce them what can ease it. So if that's what causes the bloating, then those are the things I'd say to do. If there are other things causing bloating, such as, you know, you notice that every time you eat bread, you get bloated, or there's a food stuff that's causing bloating, then you need to remove that. Or, and you also need to do a bit of work, perhaps, on your gut. So just sort of start taking notice about when you exactly when you're bloated and if it is the time of the month then those are the things I'd suggest other things that are really good for bloating if fennel is a fantastic herb for it or plant um, you know fennel seeds fennel actual fennel fennel tea um, ginger is really helpful the old pineapple is really nice for it too it's a good for inflammation but it also helps with it's got bromelain it's got some digestive um, papaya they both have papain in them which are the digestive enzymes um, so you could do you know you can try those put down complex carbs for sugar so sugar you know sugar dips and highs um, try starting your day with something like porridge because it's a really slow burning it's really nice for your gut for a start it's very gentle it's got lots of vitamin B in it but it's it will rather than giving you something sh um, sugary that gives you a sugar spike and then a sugar dip like that and a crash where you feel dreadful um, for complex carbs which is slow burning they keep your, your sugar levels stable, stable like that all day and should get, I mean your energy stays the same. Um, if you have real trouble with sugar balancing then you need to look at things like a supplementing with something like chromium is a really good one for women and sugar levels. Or cinnamon, cinnamon on your porridge would be ideal, cinnamon really helps to balance out your sugar levels. Um, also um, a B complex. Okay, right, uh, Alison McIntosh has just written anti-inflammatory foods. Anti-inflammatory is pretty much what you'd imagine. Lots of leafy greens, 
Fish is really good for anti-inflammatory because it has um, essential fatty acids and it has EPA, acetylpentaenoic acid, and DHA, which is deoxyacetylpentaenoic acid. Uh, anyway, but the EPA and DHA help your literally help your body to take an anti-inflammatory pathway in the fats, whereas other fatty acids can go down arachidonic acid, and that is inflammatory. So you want to make sure you're getting as much of the anti-inflammatory fats, which and they literally it's literally like it gets to a crossroad. And it can go that way, which is anti-inflammatory, or it can get really angry and go that way, which will cause inflammation through the body and wreak havoc. So that's why taking a fish oil supplement is fantastic for inflammation. You can also use flaxseed oil, is a high omega-3, or there are things like algae oils for vegans. And so there are lots of options, but you need to get those essential fatty acids in to help. Turmeric is a really great one to in include in your diet, in juices or in cooking or whatever. Um, it's wonderful for wonderful for inflammation. You know, but you want to eat fresh, you need to eat fresh fruit, fresh nuts, fresh seeds, you know, rather than the baddies which just irritate the body and irritate the gut.